In this exclusive video, I'll be discussing the five types of curls that lead to additional gains. And if you want me to cover other muscles, let me know. So the first emphasizes peak contraction more while modifying the strength curve. See, on a traditional barbell or dumbbell curl, the resistance profile isn't even. Most of the muscle loading occurs at the 90 degree angle. The absolute top and bottom being least effective. That's why some bodybuilders employ TUT reps, by which they leave a slight bend in the arm and they don't fully come up here. There might be a shoulder flexion component, but it's not maximized. In this way, we're training the most active range of motion. Of course, that is a strategy, but I won't recommend that today. And the truth is, early phase loading curls are still number one. It is gonna be a little bit difficult at the bottom, but once you get past the halfway point, it gets easy. So that is to be expected, nothing wrong with that. But I will say you should include other exercises to better blend the joint angle stress while lowering overuse. And the absolute best way to do this for most of you is the classic cable curl. Because it's not a free weight exercise, you'll get less inconsistencies within the full range of motion. In other words, whether you're at the top or complete bottom, the overall tension is relatively similar. So you should fatigue evenly. And as you get closer to failure, the reps won't look choppy. It'll still be smooth, but a bit slower, more grindy. Finally, you can intensify the top even more by changing the direction of resistance. I compare this to a tricep pushdown in which being completely upright is not the same as stepping back a bit and leaning that torso forward because now the cable is diagonal. We can do the same thing on a cable curl, especially if you're working out at home. So now it's really m phase loaded, which should give you one of the craziest bicep cramps of your life. Now that said, there's other ways of achieving this effect. Probably my favorite these days is by doing ring curls. Now we have an exercise that fully accommodates our anthropometry and individual strength weaknesses. It's fully adjustable. All you have to do is lengthen or shorten the straps and position your angle accordingly or do one arm at a time. What you'll find is that it's always difficult at the top, pretty much like an inverted row. So think of that exercise, what we do for the back in the sense that it gets really hard, which is why pause reps are incredibly challenging. Think about that and apply the same logic to isolation work. The peak tension will always be noticeable since we're holding our body weight. But the thing is, it's still difficult from the bottom, which explains why progression is so slow on this exercise. You have to micromanage each position because it's a challenge all the way through. So definitely try these out to improve your mind muscle connection, maximize the contraction, and of course, get carry over to calisthenics. Anyhow, enough about that. Let's cover one more variation before moving on to the other types of curls. This one is the loading pin curl. Using a cable attachment, clip it to your loading pin and get to work. Because the resistance is not being held in your hand, but rather it's being suspended, you'll find that it feels very similar to an easy bar curl, but it's harder at the top because the weight is floating in the air. And as you're going through the range of motion, the loading pin will likely shift a little bit more forward, causing that peak contraction to be slightly better. Finally, given the size of the plates, the weight is actually shifted a little bit more in front of you and you'll have this tendency of matching that with your body angle. So what you're really doing is mimicking a spider curl, but you're standing up. Now that would actually be the best exercise you could do that's free weight base that also emphasizes the peak tension, but some of you don't have access to that type of setup, myself included. So I want to show you this as an easy substitute. So just to say, it's not only about cables, even though that's probably the number one choice. Moving forward, let's cover the second type of curl, which is arguably the most important. Those that emphasize a weighted stretch component. Guys, I've been preaching about this for years. And what's awesome is that after all this time, we're finally getting some research out. You know what they call it? Stretch mediated hypertrophy. Basically, when you have your arm behind your body, you're maximally stressing the bicep tendon. And that stress itself might be an independent cause of growth. In addition, these exercises tend to be very difficult and build immense bottom strength. So let's talk about the most common one, 
the incline dumbbell curl. If your normal dumbbell curling weight is 40 pounds a hand, you may just have to drop it down to 25 to 30 pounds. Yes, they're that difficult, so don't worry about that aspect. Your numbers will eventually catch up and you'll be way stronger for it with much bigger biceps. Because here's what happens. When I curl in a fully upright position, I can bring my arm back all I want. You're not gonna get that weight of stretch. So you need to put yourself at an angle. But now you've effectively increased that range of motion even further in the part where you're the most weakest. That's why these exercises can also be a little bit riskier. But I strongly believe that training these positions over the long term will build that resiliency. And so the secret is to not ego lift while using good form. For incline curls, that usually means retracting your scapula and keeping the bench angle around 45 degrees. Some people like to go out 30, but that might be a little bit too flat for some individuals. And as far as the head placement is concerned, you can put it all the way back for a really intense stretch, or you can leave it slightly off. Lastly, you can do them one arm at a time if the stretch is a little bit too intense when you're pinned back like this. So you can calibrate according to your experience level and current pain tolerance. But over time, you want to really push your limits on this, just that it's not going to happen right away. Otherwise, there's other exercises that also give you crazy weight of stretching benefits. One of them being the Bayesian curl, popularized by Menno. Check him out on Instagram. He's a super smart guy and constantly keeping you updated with the research. So this is a one arm cable curl, but you're not facing the station. Instead, turn around and have your arm be behind the body. See, whenever we have this position, as I discussed previously, that's what gives you the way to stretch on the biceps. And what's great about the cables is that they're a little bit easier from here, which means you can get a lot of volume in without feeling as beat down in the joints. So I would actually combine both for the best results. Or if you're really weak, do these exclusively for now. Anyway, that's the easy mode exercise. How about I share the hardest one, which is also the best and what I recommend you guys all build up to. The Pelican Curl. What you'll need is a pair of gymnastic rings. Set them to around waist level, but it could be a little bit higher depending on your strength. Put the arms all the way behind the body and start doing the curl. Lean your body forward. You're gonna feel one of the craziest stretches of all time. This is mechanical disadvantage to the point where you can actually tear your bicep. Yeah, that's a disclaimer for this one. It's that effective, worst leverages possible, humbling to the max, but also gains to the max. If you can do three sets of 10 with this, man, how do you think your biceps are gonna look? You tell me, try doing one right now, and then imagine the possibilities for performance and size increases. Just to say, calisthenics is not a joke when you know what you're doing and can pick the right exercises. This is above anything I've seen, and you can make it even more difficult by raising up the legs. But that's something that I can't do, and most of you probably won't either. So these are probably the best, but not without flaws. With that said, let's cover the third type of curl. Strict curls, which have become so popular from 2020 till now. And we have Nick's strength and power for that because it is true that many have competed before that, but he was the one that gave recognition to these athletes. And now everybody's competing in the strict curl. So that would be the classical sense that you're in the station or having your back be against the wall or power rack. And all you do is curl as normal. But there was a restriction component. This is a great way of testing your strength, comparing to other people if you happen to care about that. Or you're trying to force great technique. This will instill the correct movement patterns as you do hundreds of reps over time to the point where when you go back to regular barbell, dumbbell, cable, any type of curl, you'll naturally know what you have to do for your build. This is essentially an anti-ego lifting curl. By the way, when talking about dumbbell curls, you can actually put your arm directly against a protruding wall and now you have a very difficult exercise. Like, I wouldn't even bother trying to go heavy because you won't be able to do this. 
So for little finishers, reps of 15 to 20, yeah, do the strict curl one arm at a time and you'll be very impressed. Regardless, there's other ways to standardize your form. One of them being the classic arm blaster, which you may have seen Arnold use in pumping iron. They still sell them and they're not expensive. It's basically a standing preacher curl. With your arms pressed tightly against the device, you're curling with pretty much flawless form. You can try to lean back, but you won't be as strong since the elbows can't really come up the way you like. And the thing is, the arms do not come back here. They're always staying a little bit in front. So not only are they harder, the joint angle stress is also different. Now for those who don't have or want this, there is an alternative, the preacher curl. But the benefits are very different. So although we are talking about strict movement, because your arms are really locked in, you can't really do much unless you raise the arms and get off the pads, which some arm wrestlers do, but if you intentionally keep it strict, you're not gonna raise yourself like that. So unless you do that, yes, the form is clean, but the strength curve is vastly different from other exercises you've done. Tension at the top is minimal. Most of it is at the bottom, which can technically make it a dangerous exercise. It's why most people do not lock out their arm. They instinctively keep a slight bend. And if you're hypermobile like me, imagine, warning, what this can do when you're holding, say, a 50 pound dumbbell. You can enter Snap City right then and there. That said, when using Olympic dumbbells or much larger ones as you get stronger, the range of motion is naturally gonna be cut off. So even if you do fail at the bottom, it already stops you. So that concern is minimized, but that still doesn't mean there aren't risks. So I would say you should refrain from overloading. And if you do, maybe keep it to the top range stuff. So more partial base exercises. But yeah, definitely strict and can be done with a barbell or dumbbell. And I still believe it is a great exercise for building mass. I got some of my best results when I was doing a lot of preacher curls. All right, homies, so that's everything about good form. Now let's cover the opposite, which is also the fourth type of curl. Cheek curls. Let's define different ways of doing this. The first is raising the elbows higher than normal range of motion. Some people believe that the arms should be kept completely stationary to the sides, only do this. Though we can also say that shoulder flexion is a function of the biceps. And in order to get maximum tension, you literally have to do this. So is that cheating? If it is, I'll just say I don't have an issue with it. In fact, we see it in official strict curl competitions. The shoulders are allowed to come up. It's how you maximize your force output. And so the overload you can get from this is worth it to me. I personally recommend curling the normal way. Then as you get closer to failure, bring those elbows up higher. You might as well, instead of being at two to three reps in reserve, so that's the most effective way. Otherwise, we can talk about back bending. Again, controversial, but in my opinion, it's not a huge deal. You have guys doing 200 pound overhead presses for reps and they're not perfectly vertical. They'll lean back a little bit while they do their press, but because the spinal rectors are so jacked and they know how to brace correctly, and heck, even wearing a belt, which might I also say you should do when you curl, because of all those factors, you pretty much never hear of injuries in that way. Guys get hurt doing heavy squats, deadlifts, exercises that are meant for the lower body. Obviously, it could still happen, but if it's only a little bit with a weight that isn't even that heavy, because most of you are not going to curl more than 100 to 135 pounds for reps, you'll actually be a lot below that. So if you do it for your finisher reps, what's the chances of getting injured? I don't think they're that high, but if you refuse to do that, I understand. So let's talk about the smartest way. You do an underhand power clean, aka swing the weight up, and then control that eccentric. This is typically done after a normal set is complete. Basically being force reps. This trashes your biceps to the great beyond. You will literally have nothing left inside them. And so you might actually have to drop your volume a bit. So I would say do this on your final set instead of all three. Alternatively, you could flip it around. Do one heavy set of negatives to get primed up, have some overloading action in there, which will get you used to holding heavier weights. 
and then drop it down considerably, do regular rep work. So that's how you cheat in a smart way. It's not doing a bunch of sloppy reps, which you may have seen me perform in the past. With that technique, you'll probably lift 185 to 225 for reps. It's easy, but you're just training your ego at that point. My biceps barely grew during that time period because it's all momentum and the risk of injury actually does go up since we're using weights that we should not be messing with whatsoever. So I would completely avoid the extreme cheat curls. But if you know what you're doing and can reproduce that form, so that doesn't become progressive cheating, then you're probably in a good position. And with that said, let's cover the fifth and final type of curl, dead stop, to which the eccentric concentric chain has been broken up. The best way to achieve this is with pin curls. With your arms locked out, set the safety pins in that exact position. Explode on the concentric, lower it, bring it to a complete dead stop, and repeat. In this way, we're forced to move the weight as explosively as possible, while being the opposite of TUT reps. So these will get you really strong, terrific carryover to all types of curls. It helps the bottom strength since it's difficult to pop it off the pins and you learn how to grind through the top. In other words, you can build top end strength by making the bottom portion exceptionally challenging, which is pretty much what we see on exercises like the dead bench, box squat, etc. As far as the safety is concerned, it is true that metal on metal exercises are harder on the joints. So the best way to do this would be off blocks, a bench, or whatever allows you to get a softer touch. Now, if you really insist on not doing these, okay, fine. I got another option for you. The seated barbell curl, which was popularized by the legendary arm wrestler, Denis Saplinkov. You're lowering the weight on your legs while getting the most effective range of motion per se. It is a partial, but you will feel your biceps cramping like no other. And you can go pretty heavy on these. So they definitely complement the pin curls or can be used as a mass builder by itself. In fact, one of my inspirations, Leroy Colbert, was a huge proponent of the seated barbell curl. So it is time tested, not some gimmick that just came out a few years ago. It's been used for decades by now, absolutely works. Give it a shot for getting stronger, and bigger biceps. Lastly, let's cover one more variation, the dead stop concentration curl, which was popularized by Kitty Akos Grizzly. Though the way he does them is a little bit weird, but the premise itself is pretty brilliant, not gonna lie. So all you have to do is lengthen your arm out with the tricep elbow area being pressed up against you and curl from that awkward position. Already, it's a difficult exercise, but the dead stop component makes it that much more intense. And you'll find that by the time you get to the top, you feel so freaking weak. And maybe that's why some people do include momentum. Definitely a movement where you have to go lighter in my opinion. But yeah, it is effective and does have good carryover to dumbbell curls. So with that said, I think I've shared enough curls for today's video. I hope you try at least a few and let me know how they go. All right, I'm done talking. Hope you enjoyed the video. See you in the next one.